There was recently a question about using the transform effector in a procedural stack, so I thought I would make a quick video about it. So I have a new scene here with an empty mesh. I'll just quickly create a unit cube and I'll rename this item uh, to box. And then I'll hide this and I'll press N for new mesh item. And I'll name this empty mesh item MM for merge meshes. And this is really just an arbitrary name. Uh, then I'm in the new Moto beta layout, so I'll hold Alt and Spacebar and uh, choose the right option to expand my right viewport. And my right viewport is set to show the procedural stack. So I'm going to add an operator, and I'll add a merge meshes mesh operation. And I'll expand the sources of the merge meshes mesh op, and I'll click Add Sources, and I'll choose Box. So now I have that uh, box uh, procedurally duplicated using the merge meshes mesh op. And then above this merge meshes, I'm just going to add a few sort of arbitrary uh, mesh ops. So I'll add a set type, and I'll choose uh, from the set polygon type properties, I'll choose Catmull Clark. And then I'll add a, a subdivide on top of the set polygon type. And maybe I'll actually add another subdivide. And then I'll choose some polygons from the top and press shift up arrow to expand my selection. And then I'll add an operator. We'll just do a quick polygon bevel. And I'll grab the blue handle and pull that up. And I'll inset that a little bit, like so. And I'll change the segments in the polygon bevel properties to 3, maybe 4. No, I'll switch that back to 3. Uh, and then on top of this, I'll add another uh, smooth uh, mesh operation. And I'll change the iterations to I'm not sure what I'm going to change it to, so I'll click on Iterations in the Smooth Mesh Op Properties, and then I'll press 5 to go into Items Mode, and C to bring up the Channel Hall. That brings up the Channel Hall for the Iterations channel, and then I'll just bring it to about 90. And I think that's about good. Okay, so we have this uh, stack of procedural mesh operations, and if I uh, select the polygons and press W for Move, we get the Move tool uh, we get an error saying the move tool uh, active layers contain no data for operation. Uh, so we can't just use the standard move, scale, and rotate tools on a procedural uh, mesh. Uh, so we have to use a, a transform effector. So I'm going to add another operator and you can either type in transform uh, effector and here it is right here or alternatively you can uh, type in locator, so LOC uh, it's the same thing. So I just typed in LOC for locator and I can just double click on transform effector. And now um, it's difficult to see here because it's it's behind the mesh, but if I press control 2 to bring up my uh, viewport view mode uh, pie menu and choose wire, uh, you can see we have this locator here uh, which is selected. So if I press W now to bring up the move tool, I can actually move um, the entire procedural mesh or I can press R to scale it, or E to rotate it. Um, so that's one way to move um, your uh, procedural mesh. Now you'll notice here in the transform uh, or the general influence properties, the type is set to entire mesh. Uh, we also have options to uh, choose different ways to, to move parts of the mesh. Uh, so I'll quickly demonstrate how to use the uh, polygon selection set because I think this is pretty useful. Um, so, in order for this to work, we need a selection set, and because this is procedural, I can't just use this button here to uh, assign a selection set. I have to do this procedurally. So before the transform effector, and by before I mean below, I'm going to add a procedural selection set. So I clicked on smooth so that the next uh, mesh operator or mesh operation that I um, create is going to be above smooth and, and before the transform, the transform effector. Uh, I'll click add operator and I'll just type in selection set and here we have a mesh app called assign selection set. And actually before I did that, let me undo that, I should have some polygons uh, selected. So I'll select these polygons, shift up arrow twice to expand the selection. Now I'll click add operator and assign selection set. And I have to give this selection set a name, so I'll just call this top polys and now if I come back over to my transform effector, I can change the type from entire mesh to polygon selection set. And from the polygon selection set pull down, I can choose top polys. 
So now when I press W for move, whoops, with my uh, transform effector selected, and I move this, you can see we're only moving those uh, polygons that were selected, and the rest of the mesh is staying still. So I can use this locator to move these top polygons, and if I want another control to move the entire mesh, all I have to do is create another uh, transform effector. And this second transform effector will uh, move the entire mesh. So I can move, whoops, I can move the whole mesh with this uh, locator, and I can move the top polygons with uh, the first locator. Now, you'll see that it's uh, it's actually showing the mesh here uh, because I have this transform, this first transform effector selected, and then the ghosted um, kind of representation of uh, where the mesh actually is. If I turn off ghosting, you won't see that. And ghosting is this little icon right here at the top right corner of the uh, procedural stack. And I can always just reset the position for both of these to get everything back to where it was.